In addition, we have to remember that free energy, and this is a big point, it's bolded in your lecture notes actually, it's the only type of energy that can do cell work. This is something I'm going to box in right here because it's very important. Put some stars next to it. This is very important. Free energy is the only type of energy that can do cell work. Let me just clean that up right there. Okay. It's the only type of energy that can do cell work. What we mean by this is simply that if you want to look at a cell and the system that the cell presents itself in, you can only measure the amount of cell work that's going to be done in this format, in G. If you have a negative G, you have a spontaneous reaction, you have a favorable cell work. If you have positive G coming out of a reaction, that reaction is not spontaneous and it's not favorable for the cell. Overall, and this is our last point for this video, G, or free energy, is actually related to both enthalpy and entropy. Enthalpy is total bond energy, and remember, entropy was the measure of disorder. They're both related. And this is the most famous equation many people believe in science altogether, and you have to understand a bit of terminology here. Delta G, and this is how they're related, is equal to delta H minus T delta S, and we'll go through each of these. Delta G, and remember, if you don't know already, I'm going to do this on the side here, delta this means delta, a triangle, is the idea of final minus initial. Because again, we're looking at a biochemical reaction. We're looking at the final products minus the initial products, whatever they yield. The final minus the initial. So if we do the final free energy minus the, the initial free energy, and we look at the delta H and the T, which T stands for just temperature, it's measured in uh, kelvins, I believe, and we multiply that by disorder, we get whether or not we have a positive reaction or a negative delta G reaction. This is going to tell us whether or not delta G is positive or negative, and if it's negative, it's spontaneous. If it's positive, it's not spontaneous. It's unfavorable. If it's positive, it's favorable if it's negative. A little bit more just to finish off about this is the idea that, so now we imagine that if we, let's say, increase temperature, if we increase our temperature, remember T, T is right next to what? S, and it's multiplied by. So T multiplied by delta S, that means that we actually increase, uh, let's say, the movement of particles. And if we increase the movement of particles, what have we also done? T multiplied by S, increase temperature, you then increase entropy or disorder and we're going to write that down as increased disorder as well. Something to just note, increased temperature, increased movement, increased disorder, kind of uh, very obvious but important to note with this equation, the way that it's set up. And lastly, this final part, and I've mentioned this briefly, of course, and I want to write this down in words, tells us if the chemical reaction at hand, or the biochemical reaction at hand in this situation, um, w whether or not um, this chemical reaction, and I'm going to have to squeeze this in here, releases energy or requires, oops, right there, requires energy. Tells us if chemical reaction releases energy or requires energy. Which one of these do you think is going to release energy and which one is going to require energy? If we understand the idea of something being non-spontaneous and being unfavorable, that would mean that this requires energy. And so you can write that down if you have room. I don't have much room anymore here. This whole process, I'll do it right here, I guess, requires energy to be input from the outside somehow, some way. It requires energy because it doesn't happen on its own. It's not spontaneous. It's not favorable. And then it makes total sense that if you have a delta G that's negative, that's a spontaneous reaction, what are you going to do? That spontaneous reaction will release energy, releases energy. So overall, now we have a better understanding of what chemical reactions are in the scope of metabolism. We understand that the sun is our ultimate source of energy, of course, and it's the starting point of energy. That's where energy starts on Earth. 
Cellular work is defined as things that are mechanical or transport or chemical within the cell. We're going to really focus on the chemical side of things. And we talked about the forms of energy in the cell, but the one we want to definitely focus on is this metabolic energy. Chemical reactions that change atomic arrangements. That's what metabolism is all about. Metabolism involves free energy, and if you have to involve free energy, you have to understand this equation. Delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. H stands for enthalpy, and enthalpy is the total bond energy of a system, otherwise known as the total potential energy of a system. And then we have to minus that from the temperature at which the system is at multiplied by the measure of disorder, the delta S. And once we get a final number, if that number is positive, what can we say about that reaction? Does it happen on its own? No, it doesn't. It's not spontaneous. Is that reaction favorable? If it's positive delta G? No, it's not favorable because it's not spontaneous because it requires energy. And then we have to go on the other side of that coin. If I have negative 10 as my delta G, that reaction is spontaneous, it's favorable, and it releases energy. It releases energy. These are facts that you have to understand and be very comfortable with because you will be presented with situations in which you get delta G's. You get the final values and then you have to figure out whether or not it's spontaneous, not spontaneous, favorable, not favorable. So overall, now we have a good idea of chemical reactions. We'll continue our discussion of chemical reactions in the next video.